Very foggy day on the plot. I've got some vigorous jobs planned, uh, which is good. Keep warm. It's um, freezing fog, basically. <clears throat> no wind, though, which is always good. But when you stand still, you get cold quick. So I've just taken delivery of a big pallet of compost mulch. And I've decided to go peat-free this year, 100% consciously doing it. So I had to source... Um, a good alternative. However, what I found was moorland gold, which is a naturally sourced peat-based compost. Um, so they find or they harvest, I guess, peat and leaf mold that has washed down from the bogs uh, and collected in streams and whatever. So these are things that you need to do anyway to keep the streams clear to prevent flooding and all sorts. So it, it is a, a byproduct of that anyway. So they take that and make it into beautiful compost. So it is <clears throat> does not involve breaking more peat from the ground, which other peat-based composts uh, do. So as a as a no-digger, I use a lot of uh, compost mulch. So it's important for your soil health to feed the soil. And as a no-digger, you just do it by putting it on top. You don't dig it in. Um, but one of the main benefits of no-dig is that you, um, you help to draw down carbon into the soil from the atmosphere. Uh, and and uh, breaking new peat from the peat bogs releases a hell of a lot of carbon. So if you're a no digger and you use peat based compost, you are making it worse. You know, you're making the climate worse. There's a reason why people grow things in peat, why peat based composts are so popular, because plants love it. You know, it, it, there's millennia of stored plant matter in it. It's like your homemade compost, but so much better. You know, it has all that stuff in it. Um, but there are alternatives, like I said, this moorland gold. Um, it's expensive, but it's worth it, I think, um, if it means that I can still have a good compost, um, a, a similar compost to what I'm used to. And um, yeah, I've basically just paid for it. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes this year. Yeah, I just didn't want to take the risk and because I needed to buy so much, I needed to buy a bulk. And I didn't want to take the risk with green waste compost again because it was so rubbish last year, full of plastic. Um, and there's also the risk of amino pyrrolid um, contamination. <sighs> you know, so I just I just wanted to do it. So I did it. <laughs> 
So I bought lots of bags. Uh, they don't come in bulk bags, which is a shame, but I have use for the bags, at least this year. After this year, I don't think I can sustainably reuse all the bags. Um, so what you can use them for are mulching. You can uh, keep them as they are whole and just use them as your plastic mulch if you're making new no dig beds or any other area you want to mulch uh, and exclude light. I've also used them to line my compost bays uh, to sort of limit the amount of uh, heat escaping and I'm also using them for growing potatoes in as potato as grow bags basically so there are lots of use for your compost bags but obviously you can't receive hundreds and hundreds every year and think that you're going to use them all so but anyway for this time I think I have enough usage for them. The other plan for today is to get rid of this part of the hedge basically I need to cut this down because if I'm going to put this greenhouse here I don't want the risk of these uh, falling onto the glass or in the wind scratching it or uh, this is east so they would um, shade a bit in the in in the summer so um, though some shade isn't too bad I don't want to overdo it so that's one job for today we'll see how far we get so I think sometime in the first year of my plot in 2018 I found um, a place that delivers wooden pallets for free. Uh, you get a truckload, or you have to pay like a pound or something, but it was like on eBay. And eBay won't let you sell, sell stuff for free. But they basically delivered a whole truckload, and I was like 50 of them. And I've used a lot of them, and we've taken timber off, built um, this wooden box of made of the timber. So we've used a lot, but there's still a lot of them left. Um, so I'm trying to like offload them now because I really can't have all that stuff just stored on my plot. Uh, so I'm going to carry a few over. I've already given three away to one plot holder and I, uh, I've managed to get one other plot holder to agree to take four of them to make a compost bay. So <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that as well. I mean, you can't really tell because the weather is the same, but it's the end of the day, well, right before the sun, sun starts to set. And I finished, I think, what I'm going to do today. It's getting quite chilly. So I um, did manage to move all the compost bags onto the allotment. And that's a relief. It's nice to have them all tucked away. The cat was going absolutely insane I'm removing them. He was just running back and forth, back and forth the whole time, thinking that it was all a big game. Uh, so there was a few times I almost dumped a bag of compost on him, but uh, yeah, I look forward to using it It looks like great stuff. It's all black um, I guess that's what you get with peat based uh, Compost I also managed to get started with cutting back the hedge a bit. It's uh, looking much better already but I am gonna need either a ladder uh, or um, a taller person to help me uh, It would be good with that um, a chainsaw that I can hear in the background because it's hard going with the rusty old saw that I have but it's already improved and uh, it's looking better. I just need to find somewhere to put the um, the stuff that I've cut off. I'll probably just slide it into the hedge, uh, make it a bit thicker in places because there's some gaps there and I know that the munchaks get onto the plot that way. I also had a go at getting more of the plastic tape off my cardboard so I can use it as a mulch hopefully yesterday. Yesterday? <laughs> so I can use it as a mulch hopefully tomorrow. Yeah, I hope so. It's gonna hopefully, hopefully be a bit sunnier then. Whew, it's chilly. Still really, really foggy but all in all, uh, a good day, good productive day. Kept warm, that's the key thing.
So this is Sunday. It's um, no different to yesterday, Saturday. <laughs> I was expecting sunlight today. That's what the prognosis said, but you know, you'd wait, you'd wait in vain, wouldn't you? Anyway, I'm disappointed, but I've just had to get on with the job. And it doesn't really help that when I check on my overwintering chilies, they're not doing so well. So I had a, a very poor crop of chilies last season, um, whatever the reason, probably because it was such a, a bad summer really for heat loving plants. So I thought maybe if I try to overwinter them, I'll get an earlier start uh, next year. And I have a shed in the back garden. It's not insulated. Um, but it should be fairly frost free uh, and it has a, a, a plastic roof so the sunlight gets in. So I thought if I put a lot of bubble wrap around them and fleece and stuff they might survive. Um, but I had a look at them now this morning and a lot of them are not looking good. So a lot of them are looking like this. Can you see that? Uh, going mouldy and basically all soft and wet basically. So I've there's some that are okay, that are still green with little shoots on. Um, so I've kept those, but a lot of the other ones, I've just emptied the soil into a pot and I'm gonna reuse it for my Bokashi soil factory. So it's a little bit disheartening, uh, but it means that I might have to then sow chilies early, because usually I wait until mid-February to sow chilies. But seeing as the season was so bad last year, I might have to try something else. So I'm going to try and sow them now. And um, I would never recommend to do that unless you have a grow light. Especially if you live somewhere like me with really small windows and a tiny house. And there's just not, not enough s s uh, light for the chilies to actually flourish. There's no point starting them this early. Um, but I do have a grow light, a simple one from Ikea that I have actually been using at my office desk because I sit where my desk is, there's no window. There's windows in the lab and I'm not that often at my desk, but I still want to have a plant on my desk, you know, so I bought one of them grow lights. Um, so I'm going to take that home and I'm going to set it up at home and then I'm going to see if I get a better chili pepper and aubergine year if I start them this early. So hopefully that will work. But I know it gives me another thing to do, right? <laughs> and the whole house will be covered in plants come March, <laughs> April and uh, my partner will go nuts, but whatever. It's fine for now. <laughs> he likes chilies, so you know. I did um, hear somewhere or read somewhere if it was someone's post on Instagram that spicy chilies um, or chilies that have a lot of spice <laughs> take longer to mature uh, into a harvest. So I don't really grow, I've gone for mainly mild chilies this year. I have a toddler and who obviously doesn't eat spicy stuff. So any chilies that we do have, we have to eat sort of. Uh, raw sprinkled on top of food and at least I find that um, the super spicy ones are just not of any use to me I don't um, I don't relish eating the spiciest in the world I like the flavor of chilies but you don't really get that in the super super hot ones so I've gone for ones on the really low on the scale so hopefully they'll uh, mature quicker if that's the truth about them the spicy ones taking longer um, and I want to grow lots of different ones and if you grow uh, unless you're a super hot eater of spicy spicy chilies every day you know just having one plant of the super hot is probably enough for you because you only need like a tiny one for each meal <laughs> so I want to grow lots of different ones and um, with lots of different colors and whatever and I've gone for the ones that have like good um, good reviews for their actual flavor apart from the spiciness so yeah anyway I actually am sort of excited to start sowing some seeds <laughs> yeah I usually pride myself on not starting too early but I guess this year I'm gonna jump the gun so you might have seen my soil factory video that I did earlier, or in December I should say, um, for making my Bokashi fermented 
compost into regular compost <laughs> or soil. Um, so I had to make it a bit rat proof because I've got noticed I've got rats on the allotment. So I was reading about Bokashi fermenting of your food scraps and supposedly rats are not interested in it. That's not what I find though. Um, they have gone for it when I've just put it in my regular compost, which is just made of pellets. They have just gone in there. Um, and it means that I've now got a presence of a rat on my plot, which means I'm gonna have to change the way I do things. So I've made a, a soil factory where I've tried to make it harder for the rats to get in. Um, it's, they have still tried to dig underneath it, but I don't think they actually got in. They managed to, so I put um, a metal bin on top of very tight chicken wire and I mixed the bokashi in with uh, some soil and some leaves and whatever. And the rats managed to tunnel in underneath uh, and pull stuff out from, through the chicken wire, but only the stuff that they could reach, obviously. So next time I would have to put a layer of just um, leaves, rotting leaves or soil at the lowest so that there's no access there and then mix the bokashi in on top. So that's my plan. Um, so yeah. Well, hopefully that will work better. I've also got uh, found an old Dalek kind of compost. So I'm gonna try to make that rat proof and use that in the future as well. And I've also found another box and whatnot. Uh, so I, I have plans, um, but yeah, still a bit of a work in progress. My next Bokashi bin is ready to go into the soil factory today. So I'll do that as well and uh, top it up. Hopefully soon we'll have some really nice soil. So I made a start at chopping down the hedge yesterday. It's a big job. It's a good time of year to do it though because there'll be no nesting birds in there. And if you wait until spring, they'll be in there. So uh, no time like the present, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit at a time because my tools basically are too rubbish. <laughs> so I get tired very quick trying to cut those down. But at least I got uh, most of the brambles out of the way, so it'll be a bit of an easier job today. I might have to source a ladder from somewhere and get the really tall bits, um, especially from the back. But yeah, but it's all in the uh, <clears throat> uh, for the grand plan of getting the new greenhouse up and running before I need it in spring. It'd be nice to have it now, just to sit inside on a cold day like today. But yeah, all right, let's get to it.
So, note to self, don't let your hedge get overgrown like that in the future. Oh, it's like taking bloody trees down. <sighs> slowly but surely, slowly but surely. I think I'll be able to reuse the um, pieces of wood I'm getting down though. <clears throat> Some of them will be quite sturdy poles and other things will be quite good for like uh, peas to climb up or beans. Some of the bigger ones be pretty good bean poles. So yeah, I'll probably reuse most of it. <sighs> but wow, it's a lot of effort involved. Keeps me warm though, keeps me warm. So basically anytime my partner who cooks, who does most of the cooking, asks me if we have anything that can go in whatever, I always say, would kohlrabi work? <laughs> because I've got so many. It's coming to an end now though, I've got, this is, uh, after this one there's three more. We'll see if they can grow up a bit bigger, but this one's decent size. So this is a variety called Gigant, which is... Um, very good for large growing kohlrabi so i've had some whoppers from this one and they stay tender and uh, with a very thin skin compared to like the purple azer or whatever which if it gets to this size is inedible basically it's just like a piece of wood <laughs> but these ones are pretty good so yeah i'm excited and you can see they're still growing So today we're having a hot pot and I think as well as kohlrabi, uh, kale will go into that as well so I'll pick some of that. So I've got one, two, three, four kale plants left. I had a lot more but they were infested with um, the brassica mealy bug. Yeah, these like grey little aphids are really hard to get rid of once they've established and um, yeah, there was just no going back. Um, but these ones are still looking good, so I'll get some of the scale. Don't ask me what variety it is. Um, I'm just happy that it's here. <laughs> I grew several different types of kale. So it's either Sutherland kale or maybe asparagus kale. <laughs> Though I think you're supposed to eat the flowering shoots of that one. Anyway, brassica is a brassica and you can always eat the leaves. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do. So before the light completely goes this Sunday, I'm gonna make a start on mulching, mulching my paths in my new bed extension area that I uh, completed last year. So it'll be the first time it'll have a mulch on the paths. So uh, I want to use this well rotted old wood chippings, but I don't have that. I have like a, one of them bags you can buy from a garden center from home base. So I'm just gonna use it. It might mean that I get loads and loads of slugs that live in it, but it's a bit of a trial and uh, I'll see how it goes this year. I have uh, put myself down for um, a free delivery of wood chip from um, tree surgeons in the area, but you never know when it's gonna arrive or if it's gonna arrive, depends on if they do work in the area or, or whenever. So uh, I'm not counting on that anytime soon. 
Um, so I'll just make do with this and we'll see how we get on. So basically it's sort of the same as your um, your winter prep for your beds, your no-dig beds. So your no-dig paths are similar. You want to keep weeds suppressed there, but you don't need to use fancy um, compost for it. Um, and you wouldn't want to grow vegetables in a wood chip mulch, but it's not a problem for the paths. Um, there'll be a lot of um, uh, fungi activity that will feed off the wood chip, which is not a bad thing. So we'll see how we get on and um, yeah, it, hopefully it'll make it look really nice as well. So what I want to do first is just go over it with my hoe, make sure that there's nothing, uh, nothing growing specifically <laughs> in the path and uh, just get rid of it. And then um, I'll just put the wood mulch straight on top. So I'm fairly happy with today's work. I just wish it had been sunny, it would have been so much more pleasant. But yes, so hopefully the um, wood chip mulch on these paths will really help. Because I used um, my clay topsoil to make this no dig area. Uh, the paths that have not been mulched with compost are, you, you know, just like clay would be, like really sticky and um, you know, it gets really, really wet and whatnot. So um, the wood chip will really help with that, making it not stick to my boots as much. So I'm pretty happy with that. And um, you know, it's making it look very, very neat. Uh, next year then, hopefully I'll have my own wood chip that has been stored on the plot for a year. Uh, and that should hopefully be a bit better. I mean, I don't even know how they treat these kind of landscape bark that you buy. <laughs> Hopefully it's not full of chemicals. Uh, well, uh, I did see you can use like sawdust from um, from a carpenter or a sawmill or something like that as well. So that would have been good. <laughs> well, you take what you have, eh? This always next year. So one of the benefits with having your no dig set up like that with uh, paths that you mulch in between your beds is that any vegetables that you grow in the beds can then root in underneath the path as well and use that those nutrients that are there um, instead of having grass there which I have in my other area that I'm trying to get rid of where the grass will instead you know they're quite vigorous especially cooch grass will then have their roots in under the bed instead and steal from the bed so this way is a much better setup. So if you're setting up no dig from the start and you want to do multiple beds, it's definitely better to have mulch paths, not grass. So that's a tip for you. Met, my god, it's gone cold now. Really is time to go inside, I think. My fingers are numb. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the uh, hot pot later.